In this video, I'm going to talk about solving quadratic inequalities using a graphical approach. So example one, we have f of x equals x squared plus x minus 6. We're going to turn when f of x is greater than or equal to 0 and when f of x is less than 0. So our first step is factor the quadratic. So we're going to use the snowflake method. In the snowflake method, we call it the a term, a times c, and the middle term on the bottom. And we want to find the two numbers that multiply to make the top term, but add to make the bottom term. So let's use some color. We use yellow for my a term. We'll use green for my C term, and we'll use pink for my C term. So my A term in this situation will be my X squared. There's nothing there, so there's going to be an automatically an imaginary one. So let's start writing our snowflake out. So we have one and one, and then one times. You want to find, you want to use our C term next. So our C term, recall, is negative six. And our last but not least is our B term, which again, there is nothing in front of the X. So it's automatically an imaginary one. So what we're looking for is we do one times negative six, that gives me negative six. Looking for two terms that multiply to make negative six, but add to make one. So we want to make, so we'll make a little chart. So say multiply and then add. So first we take in consideration, we know one times six is six. But in this situation, we know since the six is negative, one has to be positive, one has to be negative. So we do six minus one, we use subtraction because that will be do the same trick as adding a positive and negative. So six minus one is five. That doesn't help. So then we try our next pair of numbers, which will be two and three. Two times three makes six. We do three minus two. That gives me one. So this is the pair that I'm looking for. We'll highlight that in blue, two and three. So the three is going to be positive, And the two is going to be negative. Our next step is to write it in factored form. So the way we write that would be x plus 3 and x minus 2. We want to set it equal to 0 so we can find our zeros that graph it. So to figure out our zeros, we're going to set x plus 3 equal to 0 and solve. We'll subtract 3 from both sides. We get x equals negative 3 and do the same thing with x minus 2. So if that equals 0, we'll add 2 to both sides to end up with x equals positive 2. Now we're ready to graph. 
So using our inequality, our graph, we're going to say that when plot at negative three and positive two. So here's zero, zero, one, two, three. Do that a little bit better. Let's grab the bigger marker. One, two, three, and then one, two. And we're going to deal with the top one. So let's change our color so we know which one we're talking about. We'll do that in red. So because the leading coefficient is positive. We just want to approximate. We're not going to, we just want to get the general shape. So our graph looks something like this. Now we want to figure out when f of x is greater than zero. So that is, in other words, saying anything, I'll do this in rainbow, anything above this line is greater than zero. Anything above that line, x axis is greater than zero. So, in other words, any, the points that are greater than zero are from in this section and this section. So, let's write that in graphical and inequality notation. So in graphical notation, we make a number line. We put our first zero negative three. We put our next one at positive two. We put a closed circle above two and draw an arrow to the right. We put a closed circle to above negative three and draw an arrow to the left. And then we just write our inequality notation. So it'll be from negative infinity, comma negative three, with a square bracket, union, two, comma infinity, and we are done. Note we are putting a square bracket around the negative three and the positive two. In the second part, we're being asked when it's f of x less than zero. So we'll do this part in dark. We'll do this part in orange. So we have, we have the same graph. So remember, recall our zeros are at negative three and positive two. And we'll draw our curve, but this time we're saying less than two so we need to dot, dot our line so our graph's gonna look something like this and we'll draw in our line at the across the x-axis and this time we want to know when it's less than zero so that would be this section right below the x-axis. So first, the graphical notation. We make our number line. And we start from negative 3 to positive 2. Put an open circle above negative 3 and positive 2 and draw a line between them. And then we make our interval notation. And that's just from negative 3 to positive 2. And we put parentheses around both because it's everything in the middle. And we're done this example. Example two. We have g of x equals negative x squared minus 3x plus 28. We're going to turn when g of x is greater than zero and when g of x is less than or equal to zero. The first thing we're going to do is factor using our snowflake. But I'm going to do something to this original inequality first, or first original equation first. We're going to factor out a negative. So if negative x squared, we're going to change the sign of everything. The negative 3 becomes a positive 3x and change the 28 to a negative 28. 
So we, we essentially divide out a negative one out of everybody. So first up, we need to just use the same coloring scheme as last time. We had yellow, green, and pink. So yellow, green, and pink. So we make our little snowflake. There's nothing in front of the x squared, so it's going to be automatically a 1. Then we have 1 times negative 28, which is just negative 28. And then we have the three on the bottom. So in this situation, what we're looking for is two numbers that multiply to make negative 28, but add to make positive three. So let's deal with our multiplication. And our addition. So first, because the 28 is negative, we need to think negative numbers. So factors of 28, 1 and 28. 28 minus 1 equals 27. Does not help me. 2 and 14. 14 minus 2 equals 12. That does not help me. We have 4 and 7. 7 minus 4 equals 3. That's the number we're looking for. So we'll highlight that in our blue. So we have positive 7, negative 4. The next step, write it in factored form and find your zeros. Factored form and find zeros. So in factored form, we would have x minus 4, x plus 7 equals zero. So to solve, we just say x minus 4 equals zero. And solve. We'll add 4 to both sides. We get x equals 4. Then we would say x plus 2 equals zero. Subtract two from both sides. You get x equals negative two. So now we just graph them. So we want positive four in, sorry, that should have been a seven. So subtract seven from both sides and we would have negative seven. So we have positive 4, negative 7. Let's use, let's do the top graph in red. And recall that we have a negative leading coefficient. So we have a positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And because we have a leading coefficient of that's negative, 
it's going to be an upside down parabola. And we also have to dot it since it's less than and not less than or equal to. Okay, so first we want to figure out when it's greater than zero. Let's use our rainbow line to highlight the, our x axis. So that's what we want to find out when we're greater than. And that's just this section here above the x axis. So it's this whole section right here in between our x intercepts. So in graphical notation, we have from negative seven to positive four, and then you put open circles and connect them. And in equality, in interval notation, we just say from negative seven to positive four, and we're done. We're going to do a similar trick to, find, to solve the bottom one, where f of x is less than or equal to zero. So you plot in the same x-intercepts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, positive four, one, two, three, four. Draw the parabola connecting the line since it's a greater than or equal to situation. We're going to highlight the x-axis with rainbow. And this time we want the section of the graph that's below the x-axis, so less than or equal to zero. So in graphical notation, we look at negative seven and positive four. We put a closed circle above negative seven, draw an arrow to the left, put a closed circle above four, draw an arrow to the right. And we last but not least, we want the interval notation. So that'll be from negative infinity to negative seven, square bracket, union, four comma infinity. And we are In this section of the video, I'm going to talk about the general cases when the leading coefficient is positive, when the leading coefficient is negative. So recall that the general form of the quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. Let's talk about when ax squared plus bx plus c is greater than zero. So in graphical terms, let's make a, a line. And we'll just use a and b. a and b. So when it's greater than zero, it's always going to be in the form. We're going to have a closed circle. Let's say let's use closed circle and draw an arrow to the left. And we'll draw an arrow down to the right. And then our interval notation would look like negative infinity comma a union b comma infinity now let's talk about when it's less than zero we'll use a and b again and we would have a dot above a a dot above b and we connect them so the interval notation will be just from a comma b depending on what inequality notation you're using, whether it's greater than or less than or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Now let's talk about when the leading coefficient is negative. So there's so let's talk about when the leading coefficient is negative. So there's the case when let's make our number line, we have a to b, and this is just the reverse of the positive. So in this instance, we put a dot above A, a dot above B, and we connect them. And our inequality notation, sorry, interval notation will be from A comma B. Now let's talk about when it's less than zero. That's reverse of the positive. So we have A to B. We put a closed circle above A, we put a closed circle above B and draw A to the left and right. And our interval notation would be from negative infinity comma A union 
V comma infinity. And that's your general forms for quadratic inequalities. In this section of a video, we're going to solve a word problem. Solve the following inequality by interpreting the graph. Be sure to write the solution in interval notation. In 2003, John Fleming and Dan Rossi became the first two blind skydivers to free fall together, ignoring air resistance and using the formula can model their free fall. H of t equals negative 16t squared plus 10,000. When are the free fallers 8,000 feet above the ground? So what you want to do is you want to just draw, draw a line and go straight across 8,000. And we're going to approximate when that would be just by drawing perpendicular down to the x-axis. And my estimate is just a little bit past 10, so we're going to say about 11 seconds. One of the free fallers is less than 8,000 feet above the ground. So that's when it's less, less than that line. We'll highlight that in red. So that's this section right here. And it looks like this might be the point 25. So we'll say from 11 to 25 using inequality notation or 11 to 25 seconds, since that appears when he finally hits the ground within 25 seconds. How far above the ground are the free fallers when they have been falling for 10 seconds? So let's grab orange, and we're just going to start at 10 and work our way straight up until we hit the graph. And hit the x-axis. So my estimate, we know it's eight between 8,000 and 10,000. So my estimate is going to be 9,000 feet. To break the fall, it is recommended that a free faller should release the parachute at at least 2,000 feet above the ground. Over what interval does this happen? So let's grab our rainbow, because that's one of my favorites on this Word doc document. We'll grab rainbow, and we'll go straight across 2,000. And we want everything above this line. So we're going to go down to the x-axis. So that looks like it's approximately 21 or 22. We want everything in this section right here starting from this point all the way through. So that looks like it's going to be from 0 to 21 seconds. So 0 to 21 seconds. Writing it in interval notation, that would be 0, comma, 21. Because if they don't pull the release of parachute string before 2,000 feet, they might not break their fall fast enough. And what's ironic about the situation, these two guys were blind, so they had to be able to break, know how long they'd have to count their time before they would hit the ground. I hope that helps you solve this question.